name is Kealia Bustamante. Uh, this is my son, Kauai Kea. And um, as you heard, I work for the Hawaii Ver Ver Program under DLNR. Um, and I'm here to talk about why it's important for us as Kanaka to prevent extinction of um, our native species. Um, so, quick agenda, just give you some background on myself and um, the program I work with. Um, I'll talk about some extinction to uh, um, our native species and then some rare species information. Um, one question I get asked all the time by Hines is, oh, what they good for? <laughs> um, so hopefully you came with that question and I'm going to be able to answer them. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about how we, we um, try to save them and what is needed um, from you folks and um, the next generation to make sure that they're still around. Um, this is in the very back of Wahea Valley. Uh, they call it the Wall of Tears, and this is where tourists go on helicopter trips daily. Um, but really, really unique area for native plants and animals. Um, so as you see, that's my Ohana Ho'opai from uh, Ulaino Hana area. Um, I originally spent the beginning part of my life on Molokai. Um, in the 80s and then um, where, where I really learned to, to love um, being on the land and hiking and having the free will to do anything I want, no boundaries. Um, my mom said I left the yard at one and from then on I was known as Mountain Man. Uh, my dad moved over here for work. Uh, where his family is originally from, um, so we gained more family, but it was pretty heartbreaking for me for come to Maui because, you know, it's, it's pretty developed here. It, it's just not the same kind of thing I was used to. Uh, I moved to Pukalani. We never have trees for climb. Um, no gulches to run through. So pretty difficult. Um, I ended up in Waikapu, where I met my good friend Hokua over here, uh, running around in that valley, um, was really my, my next home, and I went to Bowden High School, graduated 98, and didn't really know what to do with life. Moved to Los Angeles for a little while, about a year. That was horrible and um, really, really made me miss home, um, appreciate home. Uh, and then I decided to do something I always wanted to do and I, I wasn't coming back home and giving up um, just like that. So I joined the Air Force and I did that for a few years. and. Um, Got some money for school, you know, GI Bill. Um, I got one honey that was back over here, so she made me come back home. And, and I thought I was gonna move into aviation, and um, I had a passion for aviation since I was a child, and I was working towards a, a pilot um, a license, and I was already working on engines on aircraft and um, it was tough to find a job at that time and the guys were telling me, you know like do this, bro. And I was like, yeah, why? Uh, you don't need this kind of stress. And I was like, oh my God, probably right. Um, and my friend took me on a trip to, a volunteer trip to this place called Awahi, uh, Ahupua'a'a, uh, Kahikimunisai. 
where they were doing native forest restoration. Never know nothing about native forest. Never even seen on poetry. I thought I did, but eucalyptus, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Almost the sickle shape leaf. Uh, and then, you know, something came into me. And, uh, you know, the guy who took me, he was just, he was on Holly Boy from Maui, local guy. But he knew all the names of all the plants. I said, like, what? Why do you know all these names? How come I don't know any names? And so that really challenged me to, to uh, be better. I didn't know anybody who knew. This is in uh, 05. I didn't know anybody, um, any, you know, Hawaiians who, who knew anything other than Ko and Ohia. Um, but I tell you what, there's hundreds and hundreds of other names oh, oh, that are important, important plants. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, fast forward, I, get, I volunteer, get a job there. Um, I, I really get into this and um, I start learning as many plants as I can. I'm going out with people to learn beyond plants, um, insects and birds and um, lichens and moss and the forest. I want to know everybody, anything in the forest. Um, so fast forward to uh, today, I now am a, a manager with the Hawaii Invertebrate Program. It's kind of a new program in DLNR. Um, so DLNR is crazy. Uh, it's, there's a lot of divisions. Um, DLNR doesn't mean cops, which most people think, yeah. Oh, DLNR, watch out. <laughs> you can get busted by, by the cops, um, but it's, the cops, the, the enforcement is part of the LNR. Um, my group, uh, Hawaii Vertebrate Program, falls underneath Native Ecosystem Protection and Management, uh, and we are in charge of protecting the, the most precious um, Hawaiian forests and Hawaiian species. And then under that is another program called the Plant Extinction Prevention Program, which I uh, used to work for. And then now, here I am under Hawaii Invertebrate Program, which is snails and insects, and um, Snail extin Extinction Prevention Program under that. Um, so, you guys know we have a title as Extinction Capital of the World. You guys know that? Yeah? That's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. This is um, Haha is the name, um, Cyania mauiensis, it was only from Maui, only um, on the windward side of Haleakala, and this is a specimen from Bishop Museum, and this is the only way you get to see it nowadays. They are, as far as we know, extinct. And, um, no seeds were ever collected, no plant, nobody ever grew plants, it's gone. There is a small, tiny chance that I'm gonna find it one day, but I am not too confident in that. Um, this over here is the Kwa'i O'o, also extinct and likely really extinct. Uh, people work in those forests and haven't seen it since the late 80s. Um, as you know, it's an important bird to our Ali'i, um, especially these yellow feathers here for Lei Regalia. Um, we had about 100 endemic species of birds in Hawaii at one time. Um, about half of those were 
um, honey eaters and um, birds that go after nectar. Um, today we only have 17 left. Um, we have around 1,500 native species that um, are recognized in Hawaii. Um, about 135 are extinct. Um, but like I said, I work with the Planet Extinction Prevention Program. Um, their, their task is to work with species with fewer than 50 known individuals in the wild. Um, there are 235 species on that list in Hawaii. 80 of those are in Maui Nui. Um, as you know, we, we used to use plants in every part of our, our life. Yeah, our kupuna would use them for tools um, to make things, you know, va'a, surfboards, everything was made out of plants. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for those plants and those people who knew how to work with those plants and, and knew where to find them. Um, they're really important medicinally, yeah? Um, just recently, there's somebody from University of Copenhagen studying plants here to see if there's anything for type 2 diabetes. Um, in China, they use uh, mint plants in the mint family to treat diabetes. And we have about 60 species of mints in Hawaii, none of which we know um, if they have medicinal qualities. Could, they could, but um, it is one of the most threatened group of plants in Hawaii, the mints. Um, So, uh, let me go back here. I'm going to mention a couple other things. Um, I got to mention the invertebrates. So, um, there are about 10,000 native species of insects in Hawaii. Um, probably, like, at least 100 are extinct now. Um, there's limited uh, research done on, on insects worldwide, so we aren't really sure about that total number or even how many are gone. Um, before my position on Maui, there really wasn't a full-time person working with insects, or at least rare insects in Hawaii. We have entomologists, the guys who study insects, come from time to time, but they, they aren't concerned with so much the um, conservation as much as trying to um, just research and document the existence of them. So it's, it's been a really good thing that we've found the funding to, to employ me and, and, and other people around Hawaii to, to do the, the protection for them. Um, we have uh, about 60 bee species that you may or may not know about. And you guys know about the native bees here in Hawaii, the yellow-faced bee? Oh yeah, yeah one person, no, that's good. Um, I'll, I'll talk about a, a little bit about that. Um, and I'm going to talk about snails too. So I'm going to move on because my time is running down. Um, let's go right into the bees. So, Nalomeli Maoli, 
Um, like I said, over 60 species. This is all, this is all them. Each species has its own facial pattern, and it's the main way that we identify them. It's only the males that have them, so we gotta catch a male. And then I get a good look at their face, and then I can I identify them and match them up. You see, these are all their species names. And they can be found across Hawaii. Um, they, they originated from Asia. Um, and they were, are and were one of the main pollinators of Hawaiian plants. Today, you probably won't even see one. And you're lucky if you do. Um, you have to go to the top of Haleakala. So if you do go to Haleakala, you can see them there. They're just going to be these tiny little black things growing around on the trails, flying around Pukiave. Um, they are an important pollinator for the ahinahina, the silver sword. Um, but they could be found from the coast all the way up. Different species in different um, forest types, um, specializing on different plants that live in those special forests. Um, this one in particular that I've been working with closely lately uh, is one of seven now endangered, listed endangered species, um, Hylaeus assimilans. It is a specialist on Ipidema flowers. Um, and the Ilima is a really important part of the dry land forest. Um, the dry forest is actually named Ilima. Um, if you go into David Malo, he gives Ilima as like, you know, like Wawakua, but for the dry forest, it's called Ilima um, because it's made up of so much Ilima. Ilima comes out at a particular time of the year in the winter after the first rains start coming, the, the thing starts to um, kind of flush out, leaves start coming back and then eventually the flowers start blooming. This thing uh, seems to maybe go dormant when the ilima isn't out and um, may hibernate in nests in the ground and when the, when the rains come back and the ilima come back, they come back. Um, Let's see. So of those, all those bee species, many are extinct or just really hard to find? Actually, we, I don't think there are any extinct yet. There is one that, the rarest one, um, um, Hylaeus hilaris, was a Maui Nui species. And the last place it was seen was at Momomi. Uh, over 10 years ago by one person he saw one bee and I've been back to the site a couple times recently and I haven't seen it so that one could be extinct but um, you know there's other species of bees running around so you gotta you gotta be able to spot this little thing um, to identify it I, I'm hoping it's it's still around the Momomi um, coastal um, strand habitat goes for miles. It goes all the way to Ilio Point and around. So there's a lot of area that needs to be searched. Uh, but it, it could be gone. Um, and all the coastal ones are, are the rarest ones. And then the dry forest because of just the loss of habitat. They, like I said, they're specific to the flowers, to the plants. Some of, they can go on non-native flowers, but for the most part, they they need they need to have some native forest around, or they're not there. Uh, this is one of the highlights on a really rare plant. Ko'olo Ula, this is on Lanai, and no one's probably seen this in 
a long time this be on this plan and I was, I was really happy to be able to, to, to experience this it's something I always thought was possible if the two things were around together and sure enough uh, I got to, to see this um, moving on to um, what I, I really love working with is Hawaiian land snails. Um, here's several names for them. Kahuli, Kanikua Mauna, Pupu Kani Oi, which maybe you've heard that's kind of Kahuli and Pupu Kani Oi are the more commonly used uh, names for them. This is uh, Parchelina Splendida. Parchelina is the genus and only found in Hawaii. Um, they are found on Oahu and all the islands uh, south of that. Um, they are mostly critically endangered. Many of the Oahu ones have gone extinct already. And my job for the last few years has been to um, search out the forest to find the remaining species of Maui Nui. Um, as you probably know, they had a important part in our culture. Um, they were used for lay adornment. Um, there were the, you know, one of those names was the voice of the forest, and I can tell you from experience that the healthiest forests are full of snails. Um, that means there aren't as many predators such as rats, which is probably the worst. Um, predator in our forests because they eat um, not only the snails, they eat insects, they eat um, fruits and seeds and that stops the ability for our forest to regenerate. Um, ooh, running low time, sorry guys. Wait, uh, you go to 2.30. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. So 13 families of Hawaiian land snails, um, and in the red, you can, well, in the white, you see how many species we had. There's a time where it was a big thing, and people would go out and collect snails. And this, there's stories that people could go, they'd ride on their horseback with saddlebags, and they'd just shovel the snails into their bags. That's how many snails had on the trees. Um, where is uh, so Akatanelide, which is these the nice pupu kani oi ones, that's their their family. Two hundred and nine species were known. Fifty five percent extinct. So these are all the, this is a um, endemic family. Only this whole family of snails only in Hawaii. Almost all of them are gone. Um, so what is the snails good for? We never have. Earthworms, yeah? They're not native. Ground snails, like these guys filled out that niche. They, they were the ones decomposing leaf litter. Um, they became food for birds. We had plenty of flightless birds. Big ones too. Ducks and geese. Ducks this big. They couldn't fly. But they this is their food, snails. Um, then you, you can find snails of every part of the plant. There's, there's snails that specialize, like I said, on the rotting leaf litter. There's ones that live on the, the trunks of the tree. They keep the tree clean on their trunk, out to their branches and leaves. Particular snails live on every part of that plant, all to maintain the health of that plant. Um, you know the leaves 
go through photosynthesis to create energy for the plant, yeah? When you don't have snails, well, I should say that Hawaiian snails, besides the ones on the ground, the, the tree kind, they don't eat leaves. Like what you see happen in your garden or whatever, right? it, or in your, um, the, the snails come and eat the leaves. Hawaiian ones don't do that. They clean leaves, they're cleaners, they keep the algae from growing on the leaves so that they can photosynthesize more effectively, making a stronger plant, stronger forest. Their droppings that they produce is really important, becomes a fertilizer for the tree. And even their shells are good sources of calcium. They just an assortment of our, our beautiful tree snails. This one um, we recently rediscovered on, on the cliffs of Molokai near Wailau. This one specialized, well, it loves Olopua trees. Olopua is the native um, olive. And super hard for fine because they're so cryptic and they, they just look like a leaf bud. This is also on Molokai. This is on the Lolu, the fan palm. You see, right there's their kukai, so they're cleaning the leaf. And something I key though is that it's usually around full moon, no moon times where they, they congregate like this. You start mating probably. This one is from Wailua on Haleakala. It's another tree snail. This is one of the ground snails I mentioned. This is in Oluwalu Valley. Those are the leaves of the llama tree. And so I gotta, when I'm going out looking for them, I gotta search for llama trees to find the snails that feed on the llama leaves. I mentioned earlier the, the rat, but it's not the only predator. Jackson's chameleon. Um, I recently cut one open in uh, the Hanavinar um, on, on East Maui and it had 12 snails in its stomach that it ate that day. This one is one of the worst. This is the rosy wolf snail, a carnivorous snail that the sugar planters brought in in um, like 58 to control the, the large snail that you've probably seen in your yard, the African snail. Um, it did eat some of that, but it didn't stop there, and it traveled up into the Kuahibis where it found all our tree snails and other snails waiting. Um, you see it's eating one of our Hawaiian ones there. That, that's just a shell that it did kind of fake that shot, but. <laughs> okay, um, so I wanna let you guys know what it takes to, to do this work because we, we need some, some men and women, young men and women in the future to help me out with this. Um, when I got started, uh, you know, I, I was really confident that we were going up and more young Hawaiians were going to be interested. I wasn't the only one. Um, and we have increased our numbers. And I, I've worked with many, I've been a mentor to many students from this school. Um, but we still aren't there and we need more people quicker because extinction is happening at an in incredible rate and it's gonna just go faster and faster as um, the climate changes as 
temperatures rise, as weeds move into pristine areas. So we need people that can go into remote areas like this above Hana that can be comfortable living there for a week. Walking through dense forests, wet, doing it happily because <laughs> I'm having fun. Um, like I said, uh, the last few years I've been going out looking for what's remaining and this was our number in 2012. You can see these are the numbers that were on the island, were known to be on the island and in 2012 this is how much we had seen. 30 species, 36, 15. But through efforts on all, all the islands, we are looking better. Yeah, this is the new number, 4,100 now. But that's because people are working, I'm working here, I'm looking. Um, you see over here, still low. Nobody works over there for, with snails. Nobody works here with snails. Um, most of the work is here. I get here sometimes. Kaholave. What, 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 what are some of the techniques to try to help the snails? Are they like removing the other, like the other larger snails and such? Uh, so here, I'll, I'll go over that right now. So one of the things is captive breeding. So when I go out, I find them. I, I bring a subset in. We put them in a lab. And they go into these containers. It's a horrible life but if you were the only snail on a tree and they don't move far if you're the only snail you you'd probably be happy when you show up to this place and look at all these friends <laughs> and you know they're only thinking about one thing <laughs> so captive breeding is is one of the best things we can do really expensive and technical work, you see these machines, that thing is $25,000 a piece. Um, targeted predator control. I use these good nature traps from Aotearoa. They have a CO2 cartridge in them. They can shoot 24 times. So I have grids of those out in the forest, wherever the snails are. Um, predator exclusion, you have to build these half a million dollar walls up in the mountains to protect the snails from those predators. This is all stopgap kind of stuff. It's just until we find something better, yeah? Um, so, what do we need to make Hawaii the extinction prevention capital of the world? Like I said, we need more young kanaka. Um, there just isn't more drive that you can find in, in somebody who works in the forest and from somebody who is grounded, connected to this place. There's plenty of good Hawaii people out there that I work with and I love them because I'm half Hawaii, so, but there's, there's no other people that I feel have the connection that we need more than our own people. Aloha Aina. We need to love this land like no other. Um, we need to understand all the forest, yeah? Not just ko and ohia, but all the other things, not u. Yeah, ahina, ahina, all these other things. We need to be conscious about our kilo. And I know that over the last several years that has become a, an important part of education here in, in a lot of schools in Hawaii, um, public as well. We need, we need people who can really observe. Yeah, the winds, the moon, um, some of the things I work with are just a millimeter in size. And you gotta know, um, you know, the plant, you, you can't 
be looking for something a millimeter from here. You gotta, you need the clues, like the plants, like the llama tree. So, really good at kilo and observations. Then, you really gotta be physically and mentally capable. Um, it is some of the hardest work you could imagine pushing through the Hawaiian forest. Um, some days, I, it takes me one day to go like 500 yards through the forest because it's that thick and the, the land is like this. I recently took up a friend. Um, she does Ironmans, marathons. At the end of the day, she told me, oh, you do marathons every day. She just boss up. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and then we, are, we, need, we need these people to love science and technology. The technology today is incredible. We're using, we're bringing drones into, into the field, um, giving us eyes into areas we haven't seen. Um, um, you see, it, you saw the, the captive breeding. That's all done with, um, you know, high tech stuff. And then we need leaders, really strong leaders, but we also need followers. Um, I really appreciate your time. I think I made made you the did. limit. You actually, you actually gave us an opportunity. So, hello. I'd like to use this time that we have now for questions. Um, questions, comments, wonderings. Um, we mahalo all of our community collaborators coming to campus. So this is our opportunity. You know, many times you hear, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to incorporate. He's here. So. Questions, Fire. comments, wonderings? I have a question. So, you know, we, live, we have yards. Mm -hmm. and we do our landscaping. What would you recommend for us to help mm -hmm. these native or endemic species? What would we plant? Yes, yeah, start planting native species in your yard mm -hmm. so that you learn about them. Um, and, you know, our neighbors learn about them. And start planting more on this campus. Mm -hmm. Surround ourselves with them. So for, for the Kulani area, what would you recommend? What kind of um, Dry land species. Ah, uh, Lee'i. This was a Willy Willy for us at one time. We still have Willy Willy over here, yeah? If you would like to take home plants that have a lot of the greenhouse, that oh, have right. here. Oh, tons of Ali'i. We have several others that are ready to go. You can take home today. Anytime you want. Don't and it's yeah. recorded, so if you're on the record, watching the recording, go see Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? How old do, um, do kids, people have to be to be hired by the deal? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's usually you know, out of high school. Um, we do get uh, interns that come through, like the, the Kupu programs, I don't know if you heard of that, AmeriCorps programs, and they, they have summer programs for high school kids, and then they get the opportunity to come on and work with us, but yeah, it's usually out of high school, and, and hopefully you got a little bit of college too, and, and to get the, the, the leadership roles, they usually require college degrees. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you. Yeah, I just wanted to mahalo you mm -hmm. for everything. This is my good friend, Kiani. Um, for those of you who know, I run the Bat Club on campus, and it's all because of him. Mm -hmm. So he's been my mentor with that. Um, and then just giving me plants. <laughs> he gives me our rarest plants, and I try not to kill them at my house. So just thank you for everything you do. Bro. Yeah, no worries. I love it. Um, Thanks, Graham. One more thing I want to mention about the plants is uh, I really I really feel like they, I get mana from them. Huh? When, when I go outside my yard and see them, I'm interacting with them. I talk to them. They talk to me. So that 
that that gives you some, uh, you know, gives you really good mental strength. In addition to um, helping the species, they want to help you too. Right on. One more question. Yeah. yeah. Go. Okay, I have Ilima in my yard. And yeah. These little like um, white, look like moths, or they're everywhere. But are they invasive? Should I kill them? <laughs> so, like, the whole plant is like. Sounds like white, white flies. Yeah. Yeah. They're like about this big. And they look like yeah. moths. Yeah. Is that wrong? Mm -hmm. So do I spray them with like? Wood? Well, if it's the whole plant is covered. Like they're just like when I shoot it down to water, they all. Like, you may want to think about. Um, Pruning the tree and get just getting rid of all that stuff. The whole tree. Prune them. Nice prune job. Nice. Not not top them down to the ground. Give them a nice pruning, like up higher. Just get rid of the leaves, cause that's what they're on, huh? They're all. Yeah, they're on the leaves. But if you try to um, control it chemically, you know it's gonna take you a little while, and you're probably not gonna get rid of all of them. But it, it actually, hibiscus plants love being pruned. And the thing is going to come back even nicer after you prune. Make sure you water them though, I don't really know. Yeah, a little bit, give them a little bit. They only need a little bit of water. So. Again, one more question. Yeah. 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 Yeah.